Anna Bash has Nikki Haley right now to talk about what now, now Thanks, that Fred. Ron DeSantis has stepped out of the picture. That's right. I am standing here with <laughs> the former governor. Thank you so much. Thanks. Your reaction? I mean, I think, look, I have said I think that Ron ran a good race. I know it's personal to get into a race. It's personal to get out of a race. He's been a good governor, and he added a lot to the campaign, and we wish him well. Okay, when he, when he uh, dropped out, part of what he said was he reminded everybody that he signed a pledge to support the Republic, Republican nominee. I'll honor that pledge. He, meeting Donald Trump, has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear or repackaged form of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. That's tough stuff on his way out the door. You know, and it's interesting because there's no proof to that. These fellas say this because they want people to believe it. But what's amazing to me is they think they can lie to the American people and the American people are going to believe it. Prove it. Prove one thing that they've said. Prove the fact that Donald Trump says I want to cut Social Security or raise the age. I've never said that. Prove the fact that Donald Trump says I want to raise gas taxes. I've never said that or done that. Prove that Ron DeSantis says that I'm a corporate whatever he says I am. I've never done that. I was in, in South Carolina. We fought for the people every day. There's a reason that you don't see the legislature lining up behind me in South Carolina. It's because I fought to get them to vote on the record. I fought to have them do ethics reform. I vetoed half a billion dollars worth of their pork projects. And then you see Congress. The reason Congress doesn't support us is I've pushed for term limits. I've pushed for mental competency tests. I've said if they don't give us a budget on time, they don't get paid. I don't get that political elite. That's what we need to be talking about, not the corporate stuff that they're talking about. The fact that they all side together against the people is what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to fight for the people. A lot of times, you've run in primary races before, uh, when somebody drops out, there tends to be a breath taken and uh, some nicer words are said. That is not the case right now with Ron DeSantis. Um, is that surprising to you? Is it disappointing to you? And did he call you or at least at all uh, inform you before he was dropping out? No, he didn't call or inform me. And look, this is what the fellows do. The difference is I don't take politics personally. I never have. And I think that's the problem with where we are now, is you now have people who want to decide who's a good Republican, who's a bad Republican, who's a good person, who's a bad person. That's why our country is so divided. I don't judge people. I focus on policy that's going to make America stronger. I don't take politics personally. I'm not thin-skinned like Donald Trump. I think that people don't want that. They want a leader who's going to bring out the best in people and get our country going forward. Uh, Ron DeSantis is uh, saying that he is sticking by his pledge, which is why, and he believes that Donald Trump will be the nominee. Uh, you made a pledge a long time ago, before the Republican uh, National Committee debates even started, to support the nominee. Do you still feel that way? Are you still going to dis support? I mean, it's you and Donald Trump. So if it's not you, I know you hope it will be, and you're working so that it is. But if it's not, if it's Donald Trump, will you support him as the nominee still? It's going to be me. And I know you all want to talk about it like it's still him. 70% of Americans don't want to see a Trump-Biden rematch. But even look at that. 56,000 people voted in Iowa. Less than 2% voted in one state. We're not going to let that decide what happens in the country. We've got New Hampshire. We've got South Carolina. We've got Super Tuesday. We're going to keep on going, and we're going to fight, and we're going to win. I'm used to people underestimating me. It's always fun. But there were 14 people in this race, and now there are two. I'm going to finish this so Joe Biden and Donald Trump are not an issue at all, that we actually put them in the past and we go forward, because our country deserves it, and Americans want it. They're tired. As former governor of South Carolina, South Carolina doesn't vote, as you know, for a month. You are pledging right now to your former constituents, to your fellow South Carolinians, that you are going to stay in this race through the contest there? Absolutely. And South Carolinians know I won that state twice. They know I'm a fighter. They know I'm going to go all the way through. I'm also an accountant, so we saved a lot of our dollars to make sure we could be strong in South Carolina. We're going to be stronger in New Hampshire than we were in Iowa. We're going to be even stronger in South Carolina than we were in New Hampshire. And we're going to keep on going until we're the last woman standing. You just did it again, and we've heard you over and over uh, in recent weeks on the campaign trail lumping Donald Trump and Joe Biden together. Do you believe that they are equally bad for America? If it's not even what I believe. It's what Americans believe. Well, what do you believe? Because you're the one who's saying that. I worry about the fact that they are so focused 
on investigations and things that they don't like and focused on the past. When do you ever hear either one of them talk about the solutions of the future? I'm doing this because I don't want my kids to live like this. We have got to start looking forward. You've got a country in disarray, you've got a world on fire, and you're going to focus on people who hurt your feelings. You're going to focus on investigations that are involved with your families. You're going to focus on vengeance. With me, it's no drama, it's no vendettas, it's just hard work. And it's making sure we're not thinking four and eight years, we're thinking 20 and 30 years out. That's what it should be. And we've lost that. We lost that a long time ago. But we can get it back. And I'm going to prove every day to every American that they made the right decision when I get elected. So you don't want to go there on whether or not they're equally bad? I mean, if they were, if either one of them was good, I wouldn't be running. Yes, they are equally bad. That's why I'm running. It's because I don't think we need to have Biden or Trump. I don't think we need to have two 80 year olds sitting in the White House when we basically got to make sure that we can handle the war situation that that we're in. We need to know they're at the top of their game. We need to know that they can take care of our national security and our economy. Right now, I don't know that people feel like that with either one. So that's why we're giving them a choice. What's your message to Ron DeSantis' supporters who are still out there? Let's just start in New Hampshire. He, at our at our latest poll this morning, he was at 6%. So we're not talking about um, a big slice of the electorate, but they are out there. He just endorsed Donald Trump. What's your message to them about why they should vote for you? I think that they love America, and I think they want a new generational leader. And so I am telling them that I am that new generational leader, and I'm the conservative that can get it done. And we're going to go and make sure that we get spending under control. We're going to get our kids reading again and have transparency in the classroom. We're going to secure our border once and for all, no more excuses. We're going to bring law and order back to this country. But guess what else we're going to do? We're the only one in a general election that beats Joe Biden. Even if you look at the poll yesterday that came out in New Hampshire, general election, Trump loses to Biden by seven points here in New Hampshire. I beat Biden. Look at every swing state. I beat Biden. I beat him by up to 17 points. This is a fact we don't want a President Kamala Harris. That should send a chill up everybody's spine. So instead, look at the fact that we could actually win. And I think that's what Ron DeSantis' supporters want. They don't want to lose. They don't want a President Kamala Harris. And they also want a new generational leader. And we give them all of that. Two more questions while I have you. Another thing that was really interesting in uh, the CNN UNH poll that we had out this morning was that when people who were voting on Tuesday were asked to rank the issues that matter most, immigration was at the top of the list. Democracy in the Constitution, it was very high. What is your message about why you think, to those people who are looking at that issue, why you don't think Donald Trump is the right candidate if they care about the democracy and, cons and the Constitution? Well, you can look at his actions and decide for yourself. But what I will tell you is we are in the live free or die state. I want it to be a live free or die country. I want to make sure that we go back to all the values and principles that make our country so great. My parents raised me and said that even on our worst day, we're blessed to live in America. That's what I want to get back to. My husband's deployed right now because he still believes in this amazing experiment that is America. I want to get people to where the national self-loathing has stopped and we start being patriotic again. We start loving our country again. That's where I want to go. I don't think you get that with Donald Trump. You can hear him on any given day, on any given stage, and hear him badmouth Americans all over the place. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is fight to get America strong, and I don't think you have to hate people to do it. Before I let you go, uh, I interviewed Tim Scott, your fellow South Carolinian, senator from South Carolina, this morning on State of the Union, and asked him about his decision to endorse Donald Trump and not you. I asked him if he gave you a heads up, and he said eventually, actually, I texted her the day before I made my announcement. That's not true. He didn't call. He didn't text. He didn't tell me that he was going to do this. I texted him and said, look, I want to sit down and talk because we had only um, spoken once since then. I said, I'd love to sit down and talk about an endorsement. And he said, I'm getting with my team to figure that out. And I never heard anything else again until his endorsement. Did he, when he told me he texted he the day before, did he text somebody on your team? No, we, we didn't hear from him when he decided to run in this race. We didn't hear from him when he decided to get out of this race. Um, am I disappointed? Yes, but that's his decision to live with. We're moving on. There's two people in this race. That's what we wanted all along. We're going to keep on going. Okay. Governor, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank, thank you. you.